how do I know that my request is authentic? Like from my mind, I can desire like all kinds of things, like a new car or like a huge house. Yes. I have like a judgment that is it really like authentic or maybe my heart desires something else? This is a really good question, isn't it? Because you're living and have lived a lot of life experience, you've asked for a lot of things and you've asked repeatedly for some. And in this vibrational reality, in this gestation and gathering cooperative components, what your inner being has noticed, it's not the reason for it, but your inner being has noticed that many of the things that you're asking for are about the same thing. You want a new car for many reasons, for exhilaration, for a sense of well-being, for maybe a little bit of safety and security, for dependability, for comfort, for steadying yourself, for preparing yourself for the things that really matter. That new car, you could judge it fantasful and greedy, or you could acknowledge it as a point of stability that is the true nature of your being. More money, which is about freedom. It's about getting to explore your passions. It's about being free to move in the direction of what calls you. We can't think of any more important vibrational reasons. And you see, your vortex is able to synthesize all of that out because over time, when you were playing on the playground as a boy, you were asking for some of these things. You wanted what you called fairness and you wanted respect and you wanted to both give it and get it. You wanted alignment. You wanted life force. So much of it was already there. Your vortex existed even before you came into your body. Do you know that? Your vibrational reality existed even before you came into your body. And the very first requests, you just put them there, you see. And so it's not possible for your inner being to hold and promote what isn't good for you or isn't by your standards what you consider to be good. There are so many ways of going about things. Esther was contemplating with a friend yesterday about something like parenting, two parents talking with each other about the way to raise their children and maybe disagreeing with each other and arguing, or maybe a neighborhood committee debating and arguing with each other about how things should be done in their neighborhood. But down there in the depths or core of all of them are the same things. We want well-being for our family. We want well-being for each other. And even though we have different ideas of how to go about it, there is this core intention at the heart of things, no matter how big our differences seem to be out here on the surface. So if you get back to that core intentions, we know that our words are not enough because words don't teach. It's only life experience that teaches. But we want you to know that what's in your vortex is authentic and it is real and it is yours and you have put it there and the best of what you have asked for is there calling you to the completion of it is what creation is you see so let's just take another minute so here's this vortex and we've been saying to you things like find a way to get into the vortex do the processes and get into the vortex meditate stop doing that thing that you're doing that's keeping you out of the vortex and go into the vortex we've been saying get on your high flying disc we've tried to find many different ways to get you to get up to speed or release the resistance so that you can be in sync with who you really are so now we're saying to you, so here is this vibrational reality that is emanating a signal. And here you are far away from it because you're angry or far away from it because you're worried. In fact, you're so tired, you can hardly even stay awake. And then you meditate and for a minute you're closer to it. And then you go back to your normal day. But here it is. And then the next day you meditate. So you're closer to it. And then you go back to your normal day. But it stays steady. And then you meditate. And because you've managed to quiet your mind, some of what your vortex is and knows is received by you and now you're changed you're not the same the mix of your human physical frequency is now different and then you go back to your normal world but you are more sensitive now and then you meditate again and again and before you know it the gap between you and you doesn't happen as often and is in vibrational alignment more often and now 
you begin to feel the rhythm of your inner being. You begin to feel the confidence that you ask for. Not necessarily the car, but the confidence. You feel the satisfaction of feeling good in your body. You feel an enthusiasm that you haven't been feeling. Not the car, but an enthusiasm in your body that's satisfying. Ideas begin to come to you. Not the car, but whatever you're ready for begins to come. Not the car yet, but you're not focused upon the absence of the car. That's the difference. You're not beating the drum of the absence of the car. You're not stuck over there in step one. Now you're focused upon step three. So these thoughts turn to things and now rendezvous are happening and exhilarating experiences are happening. And you find yourself saying to people, I don't even feel like the same person. And they'll say, well, what changed? And you say, I can't tell you, you'll think I'm weird. <laughs> what changed? Well, I stopped beating the drum of the things that were bothering me. Well, how'd you do that? Well, I stopped thinking about them. Well, how'd you do that? Well, I started thinking about other things. Well, what other things? really quiet things, really subtle things, really basic things, really general things, things that didn't stir me up. You know, when you go home and there are those things that you just don't bring up to your dad, there's just those topics you stay off and then somebody does and you go, ah, I told you, don't bring that up. Well, you're fighting those battles with yourself. There are just topics that you just shouldn't bring up with yourself. You just don't need to stir those things up because when you stir them up, it keeps you from being in alignment. And as more time goes by and you don't stir them up, they dissipate into nothingness. They no longer have any connection or attachment to you because you are vibrationally no longer activating them. And so you started over in this new vibrational place. And these are the things that have precedence. These are the things that have priority. These are the things that have real depth. These are the things that have real staying power. And then your life begins to reflect more of those things. You see, it's a satisfaction factor you're reaching for. We think this is a really good time for a segment of refreshment. Hello. I was here about one year ago in the same situation. And after I came up here, we had the most glorious uh, vacation. Start off one day here and then two days here, Monterey and then four days in Disneyland. So we actually wound up. So I'm kind of interested to see what happens this time. <laughs> so well, it'll be better than Disneyland. And we're not putting that down. That's just old news. But my question is um, clarity on inspiration. I get these thoughts that come to me and they're not overpowering there's kind of subtle and I want a way to make sure it's clarity of is something I should follow or I should not follow well you see when you're really in a non-resistant mode you're not trying to make those decisions law of attraction is making them for you okay. you hear that don't try to think too much about it this phrase will help you be the receiver of the thought not the thinker of the thought if you're thinking about clarity, then you're too in your own way. So just sort of back it off a little bit and let there be clarity in, this isn't quite the right expression, but let there be clarity in the smaller thought. Let there be clarity in the softer vibration, but sustain it long enough to let the momentum of it increase. So basically you just keep thinking about it. And let so it we have some questions okay. for you. So would you rather have a simple, clear thought or a sophisticated resistant thought a simple clear thought well you're very wise what do you think most of the world means most of the world would rather have a sophisticated big time robust let's think about it all thought because that means I'm smarter and that means I've got more going on feels like there's more dynamics dynamism in it but what we're promising you is that if you start pure, oh, it'll become robust and it'll become fast, but it won't tear you apart as it increases. So does that answer your question about how to allow clarity to naturally evolve? Just don't mess it up at its basis and law of attraction will make it so. So as these thoughts are turning to things, what happens is this leads to this, 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 leads to this. And as the pieces begin to click into place, they almost take your breath away. It's like you realize after the fact how set up you were to receive that. Have you ever played the game? Well, if I hadn't been there, 
If that hadn't happened, then that couldn't have happened, and then that couldn't have happened, and then that couldn't have happened, and then that couldn't have happened. Have you ever played that game where you can actually trace it back? Well, those are good games to acknowledge because that's how it always is. There was always something before whatever happened. And as you start asking yourself, if what happened before was satisfying, then that's why this is too. And that's why this is too. And so if you start with a simple but satisfying premise, it's going to get bigger and faster moving and more complex and more sophisticated and more dynamic and more moving parts involved and still be clarity. So clarity is about absence of resistance. It's not about speed of something. It's about absence of resistance. Most people analogy we were using a little while ago it's like you think about what you want and it's like you're on a flat land and you are a train and you put an engine going that way which represents your desire but then you put an engine going the opposite way which represents your belief about it I want this but I believe this so now you've got two equally powerful engines going in opposite directions and you're not going anywhere well, when you don't go anywhere, most of you, it causes you to want it more. So you put another engine over there, which causes you to doubt it more. So you put another engine over there. So now you got four really strong engines. And that's the way a lot of people live their life until they are so exhausted that they just give up. And then the engines of desire carry them for a little while until they come back to sanity and begin shooting themselves in the foot again with their objective practicality. And what we're trying to guide you away from is your objective practicality. We want you to stop thinking so much and allow yourself to receive the thoughts that you've already thought. To receive the vibrational basis that you've already put into your vortex. To receive the maturing version of what's in your vortex. To receive the complementary cooperative components that the masters of the universe and all those that have gone before and all those who are caring about you, which is all of us know about what you now want. If you had any idea how many of us are in on this evolution and expansion of your vortex, you'd chill more. You would. You'd chill more, you'd try less, you'd suffer less, you'd compliment more, you'd criticize never, you'd look for reasons to appreciate, you'd meditate every single day of the world and bring yourself into alignment with who you are so that you could start this day in the sequence of who you really are, you see. And then you could turn on your television and you could see all of those wonderful people having all of those step one moments and you would bless every single thing that they're living because they're filling the vortex full of all of the things that you are now the receiver of.